Okay guys, I thought I would switch up the contents just a little bit. It was getting kind of repetitive doing all the benchmarking and the editing and the multitasking. So I thought I would do something a little bit crazy and a little bit strange and create a gaming rig setup on the base model 2020 M1 MacBook Air with only eight gigabytes of RAM. As you're about to see, this particular setup isn't as crazy as it sounds because it does actually work. Now, just quickly before we get started, I've actually created a Patreon, so I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to check it out. It's just going to be two bucks a month, so just two dollars. You're going to get all the content, no ads, early access to videos before YouTube. I'll also have a chat community on there, so if you have questions or comments, you can ask me directly. Because uh, I get so many YouTube comments, it's hard to keep track. So if something you want me to test, go on to Patreon, and you'll also get a lot of behind-the-scenes content. So how I actually monetize my videos, how I make money off YouTube, so AdSense, affiliate links, all that kind of stuff. I've got it all on Patreon just for $2 a month. So let's just get straight into it. And we're actually going to start off with Fortnite first of all. So what we'll do is we'll go into Epic Games and we're going to launch Fortnite. Now, just while Fortnite is loading, it's important to note that everything you see in this video is running off Rosetta 2. So none of this is natively really supported by Big Sur on the M1 chips. So this is all just completely, almost think of it as like a beta version. So when these programs and these apps and Big Sur and the M1 chip itself actually supports games like Fortnite or Dying Light or CSGO and all those kind of things, the performance you're about to see here is going to be greatly improved. And again, just bear in mind, this is a 999 base model MacBook Air with only eight gigabytes of RAM and the seven core GPU option. So guys, just quickly before we actually get into some gameplay, I'll give you the rundown on my little gaming setup here. So the monitor is a proper gaming monitor. It's an ROG monitor that's 2K, 1440p resolution, one millisecond response time and 144 hertz refresh rate. Obviously, we're not gonna be getting anywhere near that amount of performance off the Mac. That's mainly for my actual gaming PC. But I just wanted to show you guys that this particular monitor is good to go. It can handle pretty much anything thrown at it. Now, the keyboard here is just a Corsair mechanical keyboard. And then we've also got the Rockat Cone mouse, which is one of the best gaming mice I've ever used. I've seriously been using it since I was about 17 and it's great. I'm on my second one now. The first one was like eight years old, so it's awesome mouse. Now, as you can see here, this is the way I have it set it up. So I have the Mac closed in clamshell mode off to the side, and I have a pretty strange dongle set up here. So if you can see on the left port, I just have a HDMI adapter dongle plugged into the MacBook, and that's giving me signal to the monitor. And then I just have the standard Apple multi-port adapter plugged into the other one. And this has a power cable plugged in, which is charging the Mac. And then I've also just got a cheap Anchor USB hub. And this has the two USB cables for the keyboard plugged in and also the Rockat Cone mouse. Now the two keyboard plugins are necessary, otherwise this thing just won't work. So they both need to be plugged in. And guys, this is very, very impressive. So not only have we got all of these peripherals, especially the keyboard, which sucks a lot of power, plugged into this very cheap dongle. The dongle is plugged into a multi-port adapter, which is also feeding power into the Mac, which is then outputting display through another adapter into a 2K gaming monitor. So that is extremely impressive from such a budget device. Anyway, that's enough from me, back into the video. So let's come into Fortnite and we'll go into Battle Royale and I'll show you the settings first of all. Now these are the settings I've been playing at and it's very, very impressive for such a budget machine. So if we come into the settings, this is what I'm playing at. So if we come up to window mode, I always have it to full screen. Resolution 2560 by 1440 with the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. That is the exact resolution aspect ratio of this screen. So it's playing natively. If we come down here to the graphics quality, I'll always have all of this set to low. I'll turn 3D resolution up to 100%. And then if we come down the bottom, V-Sync on, that's important. Otherwise it gets choppy. Motion blur off, you don't need that. Show FPS on, allow multi-threaded rendering. I've tried to turn this on and off, but it just always turns back to on. And then use GPU crash debugging. Well, that's just off, you don't need that at all. So if we come back into Fortnite now and we find a solo game, 
I'll show you some of the performance you can expect when running this game on an external display, a 2K gaming display, no less, from the MacBook Air. Okay, so now that we're on the ground, let's just have a run around and have a look. So you can see it's relatively stable. There is some dropped frames and sometimes we're dipping down to about 40 FPS, but it's definitely still somewhat playable. But again, guys, don't forget, like this is literally 1440p resolution playing off a non-optimized MacBook Air running on Rosetta 2. So this is pretty impressive. So let's see if we can turn the settings down slightly. So we'll set the 3D resolution to say 50% and we'll apply and we'll come back here and that is a lot better. So I'm getting a solid almost 120 FPS. So this is essentially playing in 1080p resolution now. It looks pretty good on the screen. Like I could definitely play this and I have no issues here at all. There's no screen tearing. It's very, very smooth. And yeah, we're getting around 100 FPS. As you can see there, all the animations are smooth. No issues there at all. If we try to build something, that works totally fine too. All right. That guy was pretty easy to kill. So yeah, as you can see here, guys, like it is working pretty well. There's really no issues at all. This is most definitely playable. Now, ideally you would use a 1080p monitor and just output this in native 1080p resolution, not 1440p like I am. But I just wanted to test this out just for the purpose of the video, just to see if it works. And it definitely does work and it does work very admirably. I would have absolutely no issues playing this at all. So let's end it there and let's actually move on to the next game. Okay, so the next game I'm going to try is probably the most graphically intensive one out of all of them, and that is the latest Tomb Raider game. So this game is just on Steam, and it's probably one of the most resource-intensive games that it's actually compatible with the M1 chip at the moment. And this game is about two years old or so, but it still brings even powerful PC gaming computers to its knees. So it's going to be interesting to see how well it performs on the Mac. So let's play this. And again, this is, we're going to try running it at, at 1440p first, and then we'll also try 1080p, and we'll go from there. The aim is to get a stable frame rate that's actually playable. So we'll go Options, and we'll go Display and Graphics. You can see there that is playing at 1440p. Uh, I've got the resolution monitor to about 50%, so it's not quite full 1440p. And I've also got the monitor refresh rate capped at 60 hertz because uh, obviously this is connected via HDMI, so it won't go higher than 60 hertz. And VSync is at half refresh rate. So the reason it's at half refresh is because you're not going to get 60 FPS on this thing in 1440p. Um, so I'm going to try and limit the FPS a little bit to try and get a stable, uh, you know, 30 FPS gameplay. So let's come in here and let's. So we'll go back into the settings. Uh, we'll go to graphics. I've got everything in the graphics settings set to low. Uh, so tessellation, bloom, blur, all that kind of stuff, it's all turned off. So we'll continue the game. Okay, so I've got the Steam FPS overlay down in the bottom left-hand corner. There aren't any sort of third-party apps I can use to do like benchmarking tests on the side. There's nothing compatible yet. Uh, to my knowledge, so we'll just have to make do with the tiny little Steam one. So if we move around, this is actually perfectly playable. I'm not getting like any screen tearing. It's obviously only playing at 30 FPS, but again, like this is in 1440p resolution and this is working absolutely fine. And we're getting, looks like we're getting a pretty solid 30 FPS, it's dipping slightly, but it is definitely playable. And the actual graphics quality itself on the screen, it's not beautiful, but it's definitely not too bad at all. Certainly very respectable from a budget machine. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll give this thing a good half an hour or so of gameplay, and then I'll report back to you and I'll see how hot the Mac is, and also if I've noticed any kind of thermal throttling.
Okay, so I'll just quickly pause it here for a second. I just wanna show you guys just how well this is playing. So we're in a pretty graphics intensive level now. So there's a lot of foliage, a lot of shadows, it's at night. Uh, and I'm getting a very, very respectable 30 FPS. And this is very much playable. It's not great, it's not you know 60 FPS, but this is very, very good. This is very impressive. So we'll keep going. And as you can see there, yeah, really no issues at all playing that. Okay guys, so this has been about half an hour, but probably closer to 45 to 50 minutes all up of just straight gaming on this thing between Tomb Raider and also Fortnite. And I have to say, I really haven't noticed any kind of thermal throttling or anything like that. I've been getting around the same FPS, the same relatively consistent FPS, and the Mac itself is definitely warm. But if you feel it here, it's not warm at all. It's actually quite cool. But underneath on the base, that definitely is quite warm, but not super uncomfortable. Okay, the back here is very, very warm. But again, it's not super hot. Like I can rest my hand on it and it's not going to burn me or anything like the old Intel Max would. That is pretty respectable. Now for the past few minutes, I've actually been running Activity Monitor so that you can have more of an idea of what resources this particular game is using. So if we look at the CPU tab, uh, you can see Shadow of the Tomb Raider right there. It's using quite a bit, but it's there's still quite a lot idle. And if we move over to the memory, you can see it's using about 5.15 gigabytes and there's about one and a half gigabytes free. Now I've noticed a trend on these Macs they'll always leave about one to one and a half gigabytes free, uh, which I think is a smart thing. So they're gonna actually limit applications. But as you can see, like eight gigs of RAM, totally working fine. And if we actually go back into the game, so I'm noticing right off the bat, we are definitely getting smoother gameplay here, but honestly not by a huge deal. Okay, so you can see that that is definitely not playable, although it is still very, very respectable. Once again, we're getting around 15 to 20 FPS. Now remember, this is outputting the game to native 1440p resolutions, no downsampling or anything like that. This shouldn't even be possible. You know, it's, it's running on Rosetta 2, but it is still putting out the game, although, you know, not at the highest FPS. Okay, so moving on to the next game, which is Dying Light. Now, this is a little bit similar to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but it's not quite as recent and it isn't quite as intensive on the system resources. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this particular game plays. Okay, so we'll first go into the options and the video options. Let's change this resolution to 1440p, frame rate uncapped. Let's put the settings down to the lowest if we can. Oops. Uh, yes, we wanna keep those settings. It looks pretty good. All right, so just right off the bat, it's again, definitely very, very playable. This is probably almost as smooth as Fortnite. Now we're getting around 40 frames per second. It's a little bit choppy, but it is still definitely playable. Let's actually just come down here and do some more running around. Okay, you probably wouldn't want to play games at 30 frames per second these days, but I mean, if you were really struggling, this is definitely possible. Let's see if we can reduce the Resolution slightly. Okay, we have to quit the game to do that. So let's quit. Okay, this is awesome. This is much better than it was previously. So we are getting a very, very solid 60 FPS here. There are some dropped frames, but remember this is a huge level. This map is quite big. So it's probably still loading in. So if we actually run around a little bit more, That is very, very respectable there, okay. 
So yeah, we're getting about 50 to 60 FPS. Sometimes it'll dip down to the 40s, but again, like that's not too bad. And if we come over here to the Mac, it's been gaming for about an hour now. The top is only barely warm. And the base is quite warm. You wouldn't want to have that on your lap, but not uncomfortable enough that you wouldn't be able to touch it. Unlike the Intel based Macs, they would get hotter than a furnace. And if we come over here, move the mouse around, you can see we're currently in a game right now and there's absolutely no issues. So guys, safe to say I am extremely impressed with the performance. Now, obviously this isn't gonna be a proper gaming machine, but if you wanna do some light gaming on Sims or Fortnite or some of the older games like CSGO when they're supported, it's gonna work absolutely fine. And you can even output it to a monitor that's gonna give you a decent frame rate and a much better experience than the actual screen on the Mac, which is quite small. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Any comments or questions, leave them below. But apart from that, I will catch you in the next one.